Now up on our ClueCon stage, we have Alberto Gonzalez Trostoy. He is a senior software developer and sales lead at WebRTC.Ventures. His past projects include telepresence, remote control, live broadcasting games, and speech analysis. He currently works with VoIP and WebRTC. He's going to be talking to us about the design and development of a live streaming application running on a Raspberry Pi and powered with image detection. The title of his talk is Lessons Learned Building an AI-Powered Live Streaming Camera. Let's give a big, warm ClueCon round of applause to Alberto. Well, thank you, everybody, for being here after <laughs> these great presentations and the networking parties and everything. So, um, well, for those of you I haven't met yet, uh, my name is Alberto, as I said, and we work on real-time applications um, of any kind. Specifically, uh, we use WebRTC a lot. And yeah, from the previous talk that was more on the telephony side of things, uh, this one will be mostly on the web side of things. Uh, with video and audio communications. So, um, yeah, starting from, from the beginning, just as an introduction, there are many use cases uh, for live streaming and for uh, generation of content, um, gaming. Um, there is also uh, live broadcasting, like Twitter, that has the live news, things like that. And Personally, I've been working on, on things like uh, games that use real time or streaming, uh, kind of Twitch like or HQ trivia like kind of games. So uh, it's a very hot pop topic today, and, and I wanted to, yeah, to discuss a bit um, some of the problems and some of the technologies that are out there for doing this. Um, one, uh, thing that I did first is uh, well check the the three main uh, protocols that uh, people use for live streaming on the web. Uh, you have WebRTC, HLS, and uh, RTMP. And I just uh, did a Google Trends search of of the of the words uh, based uh, uh, for the last 15 years, and it's interesting to see how HLS is still uh, pretty popular. <laughs> um, and probably because it's easy to implement, uh, and it has been very stable for the last 15 years. Uh, and WebRTC, which didn't exist uh, 10 years ago or something like that, now uh, it's probably as popular as HLS for uh, live streaming applications. So uh, just going a bit quick uh, over it. I don't know if you're familiar or not, so I just briefly uh, summarize some of the strengths of, this, of each of these uh, protocols and which one you can use for what. So RTMP, that's the, that has been out there for a longer time. Um, it's TCP-based, so it's a little bit, uh, yeah, you, you have error correction, so not that quick, but it has adapted its bit rate uh, for streaming, which is great. Uh, have low latency, usually under one second. Uh, the problem here is that you can't use it out of the box on the browser, iOS, or, or Android. The other option is HLS. It's very popular uh, for um, uh, live streaming, but it has uh, high latencies. Uh, sometimes can go up to 30, 60 seconds. Probably if you have watched some uh, soccer match and it, it wasn't a, a proper um, it was just some random website. They probably were using HLS for streaming that. And the good thing is that it works almost everywhere. And then you have WebRTC, uh, which is UDP-based, so no error correction. It it's, uh, also has uh, adaptive bit rate. Um, it's ca it can be used in in most of well in today uh, all the major browsers and. Uh, is low latency as well, so I will go ahead and, and uh, from uh, we will follow from the WebRTC protocol and leave the other protocols uh, to one side. So if you pick WebRTC for live streaming, there are three ways uh, to build that. Um, one that probably is not a good idea, which is just trying to do it natively, have the broadcaster stream everything. 
Um, I will briefly comment that later. Uh, then you have WebRTC live streaming through media servers, probably that's the most common approach. And also pre very common as well, using communication platforms uh, just that handle all, all the effort of scaling uh, and so on. So first, the first option, uh, I mean, some people have tried, and you can stream to two or three people without problems. But <laughs> if you want to stream to hundreds, um, the, all the pressure goes to the broadcaster, which will be to will have to um, have a huge CPU um, bandwidth that usually is not the case. So um, yeah, this is uh, just as a demo can work, but not not for production for sure. Then you have the option of WebRTC live streaming on on the media server, and that's uh, that's very interesting. That's usually what people use. Um, and if we are going to implement AI, you have two options there. So you can have the, the media server and, and handle the, the uh, AI or machine learning processing in there and this in the cloud. Or you can do that on the edge, on the client side. And it has, its uh, option has some benefit and, and some problems. Like um, the processing on the edge is much easier, and it doesn't have any cost for for the um, for the implementer, so if I I don't need to pay any CPU, it's just the client handling that. So that's pricing is something that uh, matters. Then uh, the other option is on the server, which um, is ideal for small devices that can't handle any kind of huge machine learning processing. So um, in in that case, you, sometimes it can be the only option. And then, oops. and then you have the the option on the on the communication platform. So you can uh, the it's easier to implement. So if you use a communication platform as a service, you can just use their SDK. Um, but you might need to do that on the client side because yeah, it's not that it, you don't have access to this black box box that is the communication platform. No, they have the media servers. If you have access, great. If you don't, um, yeah, you you will have to hack a bit how how things work. So it's not that easy to do uh, to take this path for machine learning. So why machine learning? Well, I I there are like several technologies that are very commonly used uh, with WebRTC. Like you can use for IoT devices. Uh, you can use well um, for just live streaming and. Uh, there are a lot of use cases uh, with AI. Recently, we just uh, published a, a survey, and we asked WebRTC developers what are the most popular technologies that they use. And two thirds of them said that they are already uh, implementing some kind of machine learning AI, or they are planning to do so. So, yeah, that's um, something that to think about. And usually, in, in AI, there are like four or five. Uh, very common use cases for web RTC applications. Um, at the top, I'm showing just an example of an application we built with speech analytics and, and sentiment analysis, like, things like that. Um, you can use also for voice bot or I AI assistance um, for RTC optimization. In the case at the right corner um, is the image of this um, uh, FaceTime uh, implementation that they just make you see that you're looking to the to the camera when you aren't actually. So there is some kind of machine learning in that too. So um, yeah, th there are many, many applications. So OK, we have the live streaming. And um, we want to implement some a machine learning AI application. What we can use, what are some of the popular um, frameworks? Well, we have PyTorch, we have TensorFlow, OpenCV, specifically because I wanted to play around with uh, image detection. Uh, OpenCV makes a lot of sense um, because it's easy to use. Um, and it has been out there longer, so um, it's very efficient um, when, when doing image detection um, uh, stuff, especially if, if it's something that already exists out there. So it, it has been optimize a lot instead. TensorFlow is more of like build yourself 
your own training, and that can be time consuming, although if you want something in production that differentiates from the rest, maybe you end up having to train your own TensorFlow, uh, your own Tensor. <coughs> so the, the goal here was just to grab the, the stream, uh, do some um, clustering, doing some machine learning uh, on the image, and then having some live um, video stream that dozens of, of users can watch uh, live on, on the web with very low latency. So the first step was Raspberry Pi. OK, I, I started looking, and I didn't know which um, framework or um, application to use for streaming the video. There are so many. You can use VLC server for streaming. You can use uh, GStreamer, FFmpeg. It's not here, but also an option. Uh, you can send it as RTP. You can send it as WebRTC. So we, I wanted to kind of get some information on OK, what's the latency and CPU, and how that looks like, more or less. And yeah, it's interesting to see VLC server adds uh, important latency. This was in a local network, so I was surprised to see these kind of numbers. Um, then when using uh, Res Raspi Beat, which is just the, the driver for getting the camera, and GStreamer, uh, without optimizing it, we were getting like one or two seconds of latency. And, and still very low CPU, which is interesting for Raspberry Pi. And then when using WebRTC, the CPU spikes a lot. And uh, you can be around 80 90% of, of CPU usage. But instead, the latency is really, really low. I will uh, discuss some of, some of these. But uh, then uh, when you have decide which, which um, is your preferred framework, um, you, you can do what I, we mentioned before. So it can be on the edge or on the server. I, if you do it on the edge, um, there are issues if Raspberry Pi needs to handle that. Um, you will need probably to use some additional hardware for improve the G GPU of the Raspberry Pi, and then you can do it. But if you don't do that, um, you are going to find a lot of problems. And if you do it on the client side, OK, yeah, so if you do it on the client side, um, some applications can work very good, but some others doesn't. So on, on the image at the left, I'm showing an example of, of just face detection, very basic face detection from OpenCV. It's OK, a bit slow, not a lot of frameworks. If you want to have s perfect quality, still a problem on, on, on the browser. Um, if you are not, you, here I was using just basic JavaScript. Um, there are some uh, things like uh, WebAssembly that can improve it. But in, if you are using just JavaScript for the web, it's, it's not that good, especially in this second example, which um, I was using TensorFlow.js. And I was doing image segmentation and, and masking uh, the, the background based on that. And well, the the, the frame rate was too low, and uh, the CPU spiked a lot. So it, it wasn't an, a, a possibility in production. And this is how it looks on the Raspberry Pi side of things. So if the Raspberry Pi starts doing image detection and you send that stream, uh, that's also a problem. Because here, I'm just doing image detection. I'm not doing any kind of streaming or um, uh, yeah, like I'm not sending the video yet, and I'm already reaching almost 90% of CPU usage. S and each frame takes almost half a second to be processed. So we are talking about two frames per second already before <laughs> starting streaming it. So yeah, uh, following with with the with the idea of the previous slide, um, not great to do it on Raspberry side. And then you have the option of the media server. And here I, I play with a couple of media servers. Um, one that is uh, Currento that already has some modules for um, face detection, things like that. And uh, it's the, it has some plugins, so it was just combining some of them. And it, it was possible to have some live streaming with, with face detection, for example, easily. 
And another option that we wanted to, to test too is uh, use Janus and, and OpenCV for, for live streaming as well. So I, I will show the, the two architectures. The first one, this one is the current one. So it, it's very straightforward. Uh, the Raspberry Pi just grabs um, the, the video. Um, the, there is a service in the Raspberry Pi that just triggers uh, Chromium, starts uh, a web RTC connection to the Corento Media Server, and the, you, we use a, a plugin in the Corento Media Server for, um, yeah, for putting the, this mask in this case in on top of, of the face and and streaming it to to as many um, uh, users as are connected, and then uh, we have the live streaming uh, with image detection in Janus. And th in this case, uh, I took a slightly different approach because it wasn't that easy to get the WebRTC stream, pass it to uh, AI service, and send it back again as WebRTC. So I just get it as a RTP stream or, uh, from, from the camera. Uh, the beginning, we were thinking maybe we needed some kind of create some kind of plugin. But uh, then we just created an AI service in Node at the top, and, and then pass the uh, RTP stream um, to the Janus RTP plugin, and then Janus was able to handle the live streaming through WebRTC. And here I show an example of what happens at the beginning if you don't understand <laughs> too much how GStreamer works. And it's a bit more complex than what it seems. And sometimes you will have codec problems, like uh, with that test image at the left, and what I was getting at the right. So you need to be very uh, explicit about the format and the codecs you're using for uh, from one side and another and and take care of that but at the end you we were able to have um, some processing using something is called OpenCV for for Node.js um, it's a it works pretty good and it's capable of integrating with GStreamer so I, here what what we are doing I, I don't know if you can see it from the end it's a bit hard probably but there is like a you, you can pass directly the, the GStreamer pipe uh, stream, capture it, process it, process each frame using OpenCV, and then write it back. And the interesting thing is that you can use it, yeah, just using the GStreamer command. So um, you can just send UDP back and forth and, and reach pretty low latencies. And here is the example. We, we went from two. 200 milliseconds to 300 milliseconds uh, just by playing a bit with the with the face detection and the and the GStreamer options for low latency. There is an option, for example, for GStreamer that you can set tune to to zero latency and just uh, doesn't count the frames, just gets the frames as they come, and it, it improves a lot the the performance and still with very low CPU usage. Um, here I'm just going to show a, a quick one-minute video of um, uh, the, the the examples I talk about. Uh, the first approach, what I was saying, is um, uh, with face detection on the edge. So as you can see, it's not super uh, smooth. Uh, I'm doing it on the client, so it's the web application that is handling the face detection. No, and then. Um, we, we improved this uh, using uh, the media server now and, and handling all on the cloud. Uh, first, uh, this is Janus. And at, this is Janus at the beginning, when it was not optimized. So what happens is if you are too slow processing frames, um, you are yeah, well, you are getting these kind of results. Then uh, it, it was like about two seconds of, of latency there, too. And this is the processing, pr the time that we take for processing each frame. So it's almost 50 milliseconds just to do the machine learning. And now when we optimize OpenCV, we, we tweak a bit GStreamer. We, here it looks much, much smooth. And, and it's capable of detecting the face off. Obviously, you need to be looking at the camera if you turn. doesn't grab it, but. <laughs> <laughs> and here, here we have the my famous cat. <laughs> so. Here we reduce the the detection time to less than half, and that's why um, the image looks much better. And actually, we could increase the bit rate too, and it didn't influence a lot 
the, the latency that was interesting as well. And this is the example of, of Curento um, using uh, yeah, the, the mask on top and, and face detection. And it's also much smoother than, than just doing on the client. So um, some conclusions that I could gather from, from playing around with Raspberry Pi live streaming and, and some TensorFlow and, and OpenCV is that, well, uh, live streaming with machine learning um, it's possible under half a second latency, so it's today. Uh, in some cases, th there are some edge cases, like uh, image segmentation, that um, I still want to to play a bit more with that because I wasn't able to go lower than than half a second. Um, but for face detection, for example, it's totally possible. Um, then uh, there are something to think about is on the edge or on the server, no? And on the edge, it's easier to scale, um, but it's limited uh, to computers or mobile phones. Um, the microcontrollers or things like a Raspberry Pi that aren't that powerful. Uh, I don't know about the latest one, the Raspberry Pi 4. Uh, we will need to test that, but um, the previous one uh, wasn't able to, to handle um, machine learning as it comes. And also, something to take into account is just optimizing uh, GStreamer and OpenCV. Um, if you are not that accurate, um, if you can accept some kind of error in the detection of the face, for example, you can improve a lot, the, the be, be much faster, and, and have pretty good latencies, like I showed. Um, so here I have the four projects that that I work on and I show today, um, they are open. The one for face detection on for peer-to-peer, -peer, uh, for um, also the one for background removal using TensorFlow.js, and the other ones using Janus and OpenCV, uh, using Open uh, uh, Node OpenCV for Node.js, and the one of Curento and OpenCV, and also both of them doing live streaming. So. Yeah, that's that's it. Um, thank you. Um, yeah, if you have some questions, if someone wants to ask something, yep. All right, we have a question right here. So first I try, I tried, he's asking me if I'm running OpenCV on, on Raspberry Pi. I'm, I tried, uh, and I did that, and <laughs> didn't work out very good. Uh, I show one of the images, uh, it goes, the CPO goes too high, and you, uh, it, when you do that, you are not able to stream then, because you don't have enough CPU for doing it, anything else, so. Um, that's that's today uh, something that could be done if you add some additional hardware. I've seen that done um, using some yeah, to some additional GPU embed connected to the Raspberry Pi, and then but then it's not the Raspberry Pi. You just add things. Um, but yeah, uh, that's uh, that's why I moved to the server. <laughs> Other questions in the back here in the green shirt. Okay, so he asked me um, where uh, AI will be implemented uh, in the future, I guess. Well, on, on the uh, client side or on the server side. For real-time applications, which is what I was focusing here, um, there are some cases where having it on the client side um, might make sense, especially for um, big companies uh, that care a lot about cost, <laughs> uh, they are, might not be willing to have um, servers just doing all this processing of machine learning. So uh, I know about some uh, big CPAs that are implementing uh, machine learning and AI on, on, on the, trying to do it on the mobile. And somehow it's becoming a challenge today, but because of the, the devices will still grow and become faster and with more CPU and so on. Probably in a few years, 
it will be edge for sure, uh, on the edge for sure. Um, but today, uh, there are, for mi microcontrollers, things like that, uh, I think the only choice is having, using a server that helps you do that. Question over there in the blue shirt. Okay. Yeah, I, I look. They are. They have some interesting. Yeah, and also there is one about the body. I think also like uh, body detection, GS. They, I think they they implement. Uh, they they are based on use TensorFlow, and I'm not sure if the because you can do this stuff much faster if you use WebAssembly, so they might be doing that. Um, I saw that some of the, like the face detection work pretty good, but they, were, they are not doing WebRTC additionally. So what, what they, uh, at least I, I remember that it was like an API that lets you um, easily do some machine learning things, no? And you could use that but you are using it locally. You are not sending the video stream or anything. So adding that, I think, at some, like, uh, it reaches a bit the limit of, of a normal laptop of on the browser. Like, um, it doesn't look perfect. It doesn't look exactly how it would look um, when you do just WebRTC. So th there is a difference there. But yeah, I would like to try that out uh, and compare maybe they, they find a way to be a bit more efficient on the client. So, but if I wanted to do it on the client, what I would do is, uh, and I want to be quick and low latency, I, I will probably try WebAssembly and do that f efficiently. <laughs> All right, let's give a big round of applause to Alberto. Thank you.